everyone. Today, I'm so excited to be interviewing Jose Pelesi, the program director of the Congressional App Challenge. Hi, Jose, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Okay, I'm really excited today for our questions. I have lots of questions for you. My first one, how long have you been program director of the App Challenge and what does your role entail? So I've been the program director here at the Congressional App Challenge for about two and a half years. Um, and it's been a really exciting two and a half years with the program. My job entails the day-to-day -day functioning of the Congressional App Challenge. And so uh, from the outside, the Congressional App Challenge looks like one big national competition. Really, it's a series of locally occurring competitions hosted by members of Congress in their district. Uh, and as an organization, the Congressional App Challenge, we make sure that the congressional offices have all the resources that they need to execute effective competitions on the ground. And so my day to day typically is working to make sure our application portal is up to date, um, that we're getting out all the information that we need to our congressional contacts, uh, that we're both promoting the program to students nationwide and then helping find students who, who would be best served by the program nationwide uh, and answering any questions that come in from students, parents and educators. Very important job. <laughs> okay, my second question. Since you began your role, how has the app challenge changed? I imagine it's changed greatly as a result of the pandemic. Yeah, so we're a young program, which means that every year the competition looks a bit different than the previous year. This is only our seventh congressional app challenge that we'll be holding in 2021. And so each year we see a lot of growth. Uh, the first year that I was with the program in 2019, we set record highs for student participation, for member of Congress participation. It's our biggest year on record. And we were hoping to bring a lot of that momentum into 2020. Obviously, COVID-19 interrupted a lot of educational cadences for students across the country. Um, many students were unable to return to school in person um, at all. Uh, throughout the course of the year. Some students were never able to really even pick up the distance learning that they were being encouraged to do during that time. And so we knew that the Congressional App Challenge was uniquely positioned to help fill gaps in the computer science space uh, while students saw interruptions to their, their daily schooling. Uh, so last year, we really buckled down. We worked hard with our partners, with our sponsors. We had more members of Congress than ever before host Congressional App Challenges. And we had a, our second highest year of student participation that we've ever seen, despite all the interruptions to, uh, to schooling across the country. And so it, it's changed a lot. Uh, going into this year, we're hoping to be able to combine what we did in 2020, recruiting students outside the classroom with what we've been doing in previous years uh, and, and host our biggest competition yet. So there's been a lot of changes, but they've been exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so another question, what's your favorite part about your job? My favorite part about being the director of the Congressional App Challenge is having an opportunity to interact with the students from across the country uh, who are so excited by the opportunity uh, to code for their member of Congress. Uh, you know, for us, getting students involved in the program is the mission. We wanna make sure that we're bringing in students who look like the diverse student body population of the United States. So, um, you know, that's why we have an emphasis on ensuring that we've got student participation from uh, as many districts as possible in districts that are rural, that are urban, uh, on the East Coast, on the West Coast, uh, across the country. Uh, and having an opportunity to interact with those students is really what makes the job fulfilling. Each year we host our House of Code uh, Summit or our celebration for student winners at the United States Capitol. And that's such an inspiring opportunity to speak to students who you see for the first time, many of them are considering what a career in, in computer science or in STEM fields might look like for them. They're, they're being honored by their member of Congress there. Maybe they entered the competition as part of a school project and they had no idea that they would, they would ever reach a, a platform or an audience like this under the dome of the US Capitol. And seeing that happen in real time is really an inspiring uh, piece of the job and, and something that, um, that makes it worthwhile. And would you say there's a very challenging aspect of your job? Yeah, there are certainly a lot of challenging aspects of running a competition this large. Uh, as we mentioned, or as I mentioned earlier in the interview, it might be better to think of the Congressional App Challenge as a series of concurrent competitions versus just one big competition. And so ensuring that all 300 plus members of Congress have all the tools they need to execute the competition and that 10,000 plus students are getting all the information that they need and having their questions answered for a small nonprofit team like ours, where we have two full-time staffers on the project, it can be overwhelming. And so certainly there are some very long hours that we put in, but ultimately it's, it's, it's a really rewarding uh, project to be working on and it's worthwhile. 
That's great. Um, so as director, what are your goals for the challenge in the future? Yeah, so we actually just published goals for the 2021 Congressional App Challenge. And I think it probably makes sense to discuss some of our goals for this year. This year, we're hoping to have 15,000 students take part in the Congressional App Challenge, uh, which would break our previous record of 10,500 students um, by a fair bit. Um, but we do think we've got the capacity available this year to bring in more students to the program. And so 15,000 students is a major goal for this year. We're also hoping to host Congressional App Challenges in 350 congressional districts this year. Um, so making sure that more students than ever are eligible to participate in the competition, and help us get more students involved in computer science and in STEM. We don't just want to get students who have a background in STEM or CS or have an opportunity to do this work involved in the program. It's important to us that students are using this as a platform to learn about computer science for the first time. So in the past, we've seen about 40% of our students are beginners, and we want to make sure that as our audience grows, our, the number of beginners who are participating in the App Challenge continue to grow with us as well. Um, and so making sure that we've got first time students from underserved communities across the board, um, well represented in the competition is a major drive, major driver for our goals for 2021. Yeah, so while we're on the topic of beginners, so let's say I'm a beginning student, haven't really taken computer science classes, can I still win the Congressional App Challenge? Is, is there a chance? Yeah, absolutely. So we always encourage people, no matter their coding level, to take part in the Congressional App Challenge. Once you enter the competition, you never you never know what might happen. And when it comes to judging these apps, uh, each member of Congress has an opportunity to put their own criteria forward about what's important to them for the judging process. But it's important to know that no member of Congress is ho is judging their app strictly on its technical bona fides. And so that is to say, design is an important piece, creativity is an important piece, and the mission of the app is typically an important piece. And so even if you're not an expert coder, if you've got an amazing idea that helps serve your community, it's creative and it's well thought out, you may still have an opportunity to win the Congressional App Challenge. Each year we see dozens of winners who describe themselves as beginners win their congressional app challenges in various districts across the country. And they come to us and say, I had no idea that I'd ever have an opportunity to win this. But, but now that I'm here, I think this is something that I'm interested in, that I want to pursue further, perhaps study in college. And um, those are really inspiring moments for us. And so I, I would say absolutely it's possible. We see it every year. Um, and uh, we'd encourage any student of any skill level to participate. I love it. <laughs> so what would you say is your greatest piece of advice to students participating in the app challenge? If I had to give one piece of advice to students participating in the app challenge, I would encourage them to create an app that really interests them. Um, so find something that they're passionate about, find a problem in their community that they want to solve, and use that as the springboard to create an incredible app for the Congressional App Challenge. We see every year students are uh, creating apps about things that inspire them or um, that are going on in their community, they're important to them. And those are the apps that we find have the biggest impact and typically are most well received by our judges and our members of Congress who review them. So I would start with something that you really care about, that you're passionate about, that you wanna solve in terms of a problem that might be taking place locally or nationally, and then work from there. That inspiration will help drive you to, to develop a great app, to put the necessary hours in to get the work done, and it'll really come through when you're putting in your application and having it considered for the Congressional App Challenge. Sounds great. Okay, so as the program director for the Congressional App Challenge, I feel like you'd have a really good answer to this, but what is your favorite app on your phone? My favorite app on <laughs> my phone. So I use my phone a lot, obviously, um, for many different things. Um, and I've got a lot of apps that I like a lot. I would say that my favorite app on my phone, it's a simple app, but it solves a big problem for me here locally. It's called Park Mobile. And Essentially, the way the app works is it allows you to pay for your parking meters by phone instead of needing to have quarters or credit cards or anything physical to pay for your time. You can also add more time to your meter without getting up from your meal or going out of the store and, and, <laughs> and filling up the, the meter physically. And so that's also a big problem for me. Um, sometimes I think those simple apps are the most ingenious. And this is a really great one that I can use here in Washington, D.C. And so in terms of most utility for me on a daily basis, I feel like that's a really great one. I feel like I need that app. <laughs> and my last question for you, what is the latest piece of technology that excites you? 
Yeah, that's a great question. I think I'm gonna turn it on its head um, and talk a little bit about not emerging technology, but instead how ubiquitous, uh, incredible pieces of technology that would have been unfathomable 15 or 20 years ago are now for uh, people globally. Uh, so we're seeing access to um, smartphones and computers and computing power um, and the ability to get involved in you know, uh, computer science as a, as a field or take part in, in, in learning that's going on on the internet across the globe. We're seeing opportunities to do this, uh, not just for um, you know, people who have a background in this or have the means to, to get the latest and the greatest, but um, basically to anybody who has an access, access to a smartphone and a, and a 4G phone connection uh, or an opportunity to connect to free broadband Wi-Fi, whether that be at home or in their local libraries or anywhere else. And so um, I think as, the, you know, as, as tech from the last few years becomes democratized across the globe, we'll see more and more students and more and more people globally um, be able to take part in some of the amazing things that we've been able to put together technologically. Uh, and I think that that's going to be something that'll be really inspiring. So that's that's what most excites me about uh, the current state of technology. Great answer. <laughs> wow. Um, so that's all the questions I have for you today. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. This is a really informative interview. And to our viewers, don't forget the 2021 app challenge is live. So you can register now up until November 1st to submit your app. Um, and also please follow us on social media. Our Instagram and Facebook is at Congressional App Challenge. Our Twitter is at Congressional AC and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.